Hello, everyone. For those of you who don't know, there is a disease in the Pokemon world. It makes these Pokemon utterly hideous. This disease is known as being shiny. It's got roughly a 0.02% chance of happening, and it is incurable. Now, I can relate to these guys. I was born ginger, therefore I can fully understand that they need some support, so let's do a hardcore Nuzlocke with them. Rules are the exact same as always. The only difference is obviously instead of first encounter it is the first shiny encounter because it will be very rare I manage to get my first encounter being a shiny. To put it into perspective, even though I do many Pokemon challenges, I have only ever seen one shiny Pokemon during this entire time of doing it over two years. However, before I begin this excruciating task, I figure I shall go and see a happy face in May. Getting ready to start her own adventure by prepping up, making sure her Pokemon are fully healed and she has some potions. We do interrupt her with it, but she does manage to sweep it off as a laugh and let us get on our way. Now, there are three Pokemon to choose from, and I think that we've got Torchic and Mudkip with pretty meh shinies, so I opted to go for the baby that is Trico. After that, we get to go and face May in a battle, but as you can see, it is one-sided because I was not risking losing this shiny. Therefore, I leveled it up to level 10 before even beginning this battle. And with that done, we get onto another hunt and we end up finding a shiny Zigzagoon. I name it Amber and catch it and make it a part of our team. Next up, we meet up with our dad and we get rudely interrupted by some weird guy with some green hair. Is this a shiny human? Anyway, it's our task to help him catch a new Pokemon, and his isn't even shiny. What a dirty guy. He's going to be able to build a team in the time it takes me to get just one member. Now we can properly begin our journey by starting the gym challenge. The first up is Roxanne and her rock types, but we make such incredibly short work of her. We've got Absorb on Trico, therefore both of her Pokemon go down in an instant. After that, because we've done such courageous work battling Team Aqua, we get to meet Dr. Stowe. His name's not actually Dr. Stone, but I've been reading a lot of that manga lately, therefore it was just in my head. Anyway, even though his company is a high-tech cutting edge and they invented, you know, phone calls in the Pokemon world, he for some reason can't contact his son, therefore we've got to go and give him a letter. Before I take on the next gym, I give my crystal a bit of a shine and it becomes a Grovile. Now we've evolved, we're ready to take on Broly being the second gym leader. We make incredibly short work of his matchup. It just manages to lower our defense slightly as we only take two hits to take it out. He then sends out his Maku hitter and it's a good thing we're not Anakin as he's just throwing sand at us. I don't like sand. Because of these repeated barrages of sand, we need to switch out and switch back in before we can manage to even hit him. Eventually though, we do make it through and we get this second gym badge. Now that's done, we can finally give the letter to Steven who is the son of Mr. Stone and he is incredibly youthful in his face but he looks so old with that hair what's his secret ground up caterpies or something we then get the wonderful experience of meeting the hunk that is archie it really did do him some pure respect when they remade him anyway before another fight i decide it's time to get another encounter and i decide to pick a route where there are the majority of electric pokemon and i run into a gulpin I can already see this flying gym being an absolute pain. Anyway, I end up catching him and I call him Sapphire. With him on the team though, I am 100% ready to take on May, and this is actually one of the toughest rival fights in these games. Thankfully for us, she does always start off with the Pokemon weak to us, so we make incredibly quick work of it with Crystal. She then sends out her Combuscan, so all we need to do is switch Sapphire in, we put a Yawn to put it to sleep, and then we can just sludge away Stays asleep for ages as well, so we managed to do loads of damage and take it out. All she's got left is a Shroomish, but we're a Poison type, so it's bye-bye. That battle being done meant we had enough XP for our Amber to evolve into a Linoon. Now we've got to talk about Watson. It should be quite easy because we've got Trico, right? Well, someone was an idiot, forgot to turn the XP share off, therefore our Grovile is now level 22 and cannot be used in this battle. I decide the best option to start off with is Linoon as I've taught it Rock Smash and it does have a very powerful stab move in Headbutt. Because of these moves, we do make incredibly short work of both the Magnemite and Voltor, but we do take some pretty heavy damage during it. This is really bad news as it means we are actually in a favorable range for that Magneton to take us out with Volt Switch. Therefore, I have no choice but to say goodbye to Amber in the most respectful way possible. Thank you for your service. Oh, wait, it held on at 1 HP? 
but we can't lose it now. Because of Amber's pure grit, I decide to bring Sapphire in and get a Yawn off. Therefore, we'll be putting the Magneton to sleep. Unfortunately for us, though, Yawn is a two-turn asleep move. Therefore, he can get hit off and he does actually manage to take Sapphire out here. We've got Sapphire left on just one HP and that's all we've got. So we use one Rock Smash. It doesn't kill it. So I have no choice. I've got to hold my breath and see if it wakes up. And it doesn't. That gives us a free hit against it to use one more Rock Smash. And that is the Gym Badge. This gym went from incredibly free to a absolute nightmare. All thanks to me being a moron. And it's put into perspective how careful I need to be for the rest of this run. I literally lose if I lose any of my Pokemon. Like this is such wasted time on the Gulpin. After we tiptoe our way carefully a bit further, we run into May, and oh my god, it's big. It's huge. She'd like to take the cable car up there one day. Is she hinting at something here or not? I then decide it's time we get a third team member, and I find a Numel, which I end up naming Onyx. Anyway, we progress a bit further, and we run into a guy sniffing a tree. Bit weird, mate. He then takes us inside the tree. It's bigger on the inside. Is it? I've noticed. I'm then trying to use a PC in the next sound, but there's someone being very selfish and hogging it. She's acting like she owns the bloody thing. We then run into Maxi, and he just seems to talk down on us. Like, you might be wearing glasses, but that doesn't make you intelligent. You could be just as dumb as I am. Oh, he's using big words like impudent. What a fancy guy. And now we have the first battle against Archie. He opts to lead in Mighty Enna, so I opt to lead Linoon. However, he's not a massive fan of this as he roars me right on out of there. Thankfully, Numel is plenty enough to get rid of the remaining HP on this Mighty Enna, but we do have the Sharpedo to deal with now. Now, you might think we switch into Grovile and we take this out, but it actually has an Ice type move. Therefore, I choose to bring in Amber. It does use Swagger against us, but I'd already equipped a Person Berry as I was expecting the Mighty Enna to use Swagger, to be perfectly honest. This means we get a plus two attack for free. Therefore, we can take out the Sharpedo and the Golbat with relative ease. And with us foiling a few gang members, we might as well get on to the real adventure against the government that is the gym leaders. But it's Flannery who's got fire type Pokemon and we have a ground type move on Onyx. So we hit all of them down in just one shot. We then decide to do another hunt and that Pokemon ends up being Sandshrew. There was a 20% chance of this being a trap inch, but unfortunately we didn't get lucky enough to get it in this case. I end up catching him and naming him Emerald. And since the level cap's pretty decent, Emerald evolves into a Sand Slash instantaneously. Now there's next to no story between the 4th and 5th gym, so we'll just hop on right through to take down Daddy Norman. I start off with Amber and I use a headbutt, but it uses Yawn against me and I didn't do that much damage anyway. Therefore, I opt to bring Crystal out. Crystal does manage to get him low, but it yawns us yet again, meaning we need to do another switch. I chose Onyx and he gets hit for some heavy damage, but he retaliates right back and takes it out. We've then got Vigoroth, who knows the move Retaliate, which is going to do major damage. Therefore, I opt to switch Amber in as I don't think we'll need it too much. And he does get crit, knocking him incredibly low. After this, I decide to bring Amber back out and all it takes is me draining the life out of this Vigoroth to manage to take it down. Unfortunately for us, at this point, Crystal's too low to take a Retaliate. Therefore, I bring Emerald out. However, it doesn't end up using it, so it does minimal damage and we can just use a few Magnitudes to take it out. We then meet up with Skincare God Steven and he whisks us away to a private island. Maybe we'll learn all his secrets. Never mind, we just had to take down some grunts and save a legendary Pokemon. All in a day's work for a child, am I right? Once this is done, we get the pleasure of evolving Onyx into a Camerupt, and you can finally see why I gave him this name. We then end up running into Shelly, and my god, isn't she phenomenal. We beat her down anyway, though, as is right. And it seems May was scared of someone coming to take the title of Miss Hoenn away from her as she comes and fights us next. Unfortunately from her, that goes by incredibly quickly. We then run into Steven yet again and we get gifted something. It's a Mega Stone. However, we cannot use it because the level cap is too low right now. I feel like a kid before Christmas when they know what they're getting and they just can't use it because the parents will know that they know. Because I'm so excited to use it, I decide it's time to take on the sixth gym so we can get that level cap raised all the way up. 
She starts off with Swallow as I start off with Kame Rupt, but as you can imagine, we know a rock move and that makes incredibly short work of the Swallow. After this, she sends in Pelipper and I decide Crystal is the best one to be using and I was right as it takes it down in only two Leaf Blades. Next up, we have Skarmory, which only has one weakness being fire. Therefore, Onyx has to come right back out and Lava Plume it out of existence. We then have to deal with the Altaria, and this thing is incredibly troublesome. It has both Cotton Guard and Roost, and the only moves we have super effective against it are physical. Thankfully, we managed to get a burn off on it, but at this point, we're too low to stay in. Therefore, we need to switch out. We do then have to bring out Emerald, who unfortunately gets paralyzed. Thankfully though, it manages to land a Rock Tomb and it crits, meaning that all them Cotton Guards were for nothing and we've got this Gym Badge. We then meet up with Archie who's stealing an orb from top of a mountain and we have to fight his little guy, Max. Now, I'm literally only showing you this so I can show off the Mega Sceptile. How cool is it as a shiny? We then have the joy of yet another fight against May. But unfortunately for her, we've been quite well rounded with the shinies that we've got so we sweep on right through her. We then run into a TV interview being held outside where a submarine's being held and conveniently as the film crew leave, the submarine's being stolen. Now I'm not saying they're in on it, but the timing is pretty suspicious is all I'm going to say. We then have five Aquagrunts attack us at all the same time, but these are pathetic ones from like early games, so we smash them all down with one hit from Came Road. We then finally get a good look at the submarine after it's been decorated and as Sharpedo it looks miles better than it does as a camera up. We can't really go any further though until we've raised the level cap yet again by taking on Tay and Liza. Now I don't know if you know this, but both her Pokemon have the same typing, therefore the same weakness. We've got a Sceptile, it knows Leaf Blade, super effective against both of them because they've got the same typing, so we just fly right on through. Upon exit in the gym, we managed to see a sunset as well as a beam of light, but I'll tell you what, they look beautiful together. Now, I think it's time for another encounter, so I go to Shoal Cave, where you can get both a Golbat and a Celio at 40%. So, of course, the encounter I end up getting is a Sphiel at 20%. The same chances of getting a Trap Inch in the desert. The one-time odds don't matter, I happen to get the rare one. How fantastic. I love my life. They end up getting caught and get given the name Opal. Opal very quickly goes on to evolve into a Celio, because, you know, we probably should have got a Celio here. And with us having a pretty decent team, I decide it is time to take on Archie. He starts off with Mighty Enna, but we lead with Amber, and we've actually got a person very equipped just in case of a Swagger, but it doesn't happen. It doesn't end up hitting us, though, so we take it out easy enough. The Mook's a poison type, so we bring in Onyx, and we hit it to take it. Oh, it survived on a Slither, and we're incredibly low. Emerald's going to come out and finish the job then. And it's a really good thing we did have Emerald out as this thing can two-shot the Crobat that comes out right after this. However, it's got nowhere near enough health to be able to survive any attacks from Sharpedo, so we have to switch out and I choose to bring in Crystal. Crystal takes some major damage against the Sharpedo, being knocked down to only 15 health. A crit here would have taken us out. And we also have one other issue. This Sharpedo is actually faster than us before we Mega Evolve. And for those of you who don't know, it's the turn after you Mega Evolve when that speed difference comes into effect. There was one thing that I did before this battle that I am so thankful I kept, and that was have Detect though. So we can Mega Evolve, use Detect, and that means we've now Mega Evolved to raise our speed. So on the next turn, we can one-shot it with a Leaf Blade. It's also really lucky that it doesn't keep Rough Skin, as that would have taken us out also. Even though we've beaten him down, he still manages to release Kyogre and unleash the British weather across all of Hoenn. Yeah, I live this a day-to-day -day life. It's not that bad. Why is everyone having a hissy fit? We then end up having a massive conversation with all the adults outside in the rain. And it's quite miraculous. Like, either everyone in the Pokemon world has major hair gel that just can't disappear with wetness. Or we just don't get wet. Which one is it? I genuinely don't know. And I wish my hair could stay like that went out in the rain. We then end up finding the legendary beast that is Kyogre and the first thing we have to do is ride it underwater into a fancy cavern. Now this thing is not only a legendary Pokemon, it has something called Primal Reversion which makes it glow like mad. But funny enough, we chose the grass type starter so um, bye bye Ogre Boy. Seems it's you who needs to get out of my swamp. And with that down we have the 8th and final gym member in Wallace. 
Now, him being the final gym member, he's obviously incredibly tough and powerful. And, oh, we've made incredibly short work of him with Skeptile. Nice. After the battle against him, we then have our Celio evolve into a Walrein. My favorite Pokemon, by the way. Just look how cute and blubbery he is. Now, there's just one step standing between me and the Elite Four, and that is the guy we helped get his first ever Pokemon, Wally. He opts to start off with Altaria, therefore I choose Kamerupt as my starter as we know Rock Slide and it only takes two of these to manage to take it out. He then shows he doesn't understand type matchups as he sends Roselia out against a fire type so you can see where that goes. Unfortunately for us though it did manage to get a Toxic off so we need to bring Emerald up against the Magneton. The Magneton does have Sturdy but it doesn't help it that much as we just need to use two digs and we finished it off. Emerald's then really low, so I opt to switch in Crystal, but unfortunately I do that on a Sing turn. It's not doing much damage to us, so I just keep spamming through the sleep until we manage to wake up and take it out. We then just have the Gallade left, and we've taught X Scissor, which manages to almost take it out, and it retaliates. But it wasn't enough, so we can attack it yet again and win this battle. And with that battle down, we're now ready to face the Elite Four. The first one is Sydney. Now he starts off with his Mighty Enna, but we know Amber and we've taught it Belly Drum. I know he's going to go for Swagger on this first turn, so I equipped a Person Berry and that means I can get a free Belly Drum off to max my attack out. I can then proceed to use Headbutt on every single one of his Pokemon up until we get to the Cat turn. Now, the Cat turn has something known as Spiky Shield, which could take us out if we hit it. Therefore, the best decision was to switch out. I choose Onyx, and he didn't end up using Spiky Shield, so I would have been safe, but I prefer to err on the side of caution, and we did win this battle anyway. Next up, we have the battle against Phoebe and her Ghost types. She uses Dusclops, and I use Emerald. This is because Emerald can set up a Sword Stance and heal itself from the confusion with a Person Berry. From there, all it takes is one Earthquake, and we've taken that out. She then sends out her Dusk Noir. Now, Dusk Noir is a pretty powerful Pokemon, and we need to set up another Sword Stance to be able to take it out. Once we've set this up, we're faster than every single one of her Pokemon from here on out, so we can one-shot all of them with just one Earthquake. Next up, we have Glacier and her Ice types. I decide the best idea is to start off with Onyx, and therefore he can take out the Glalie with just one Lava Plume. From there, Walrein comes out, and I know I can't take this thing out with one hit from Sceptile, therefore I switch in Opal myself. From there, she surfs us, and it's just a matter of us both using Uno reverse cards against each other until we knock him low. Once it's low enough, I can switch into Sceptile and safely get off a Leaf Blade to take it out. Frostlass is going to be able to do major damage to us though, therefore I opt to switch Onyx back in, but he gets confused. I then bring Amber in and he manages to get one Shadow Claw off to knock it decently low before I need to switch out because we're confused. Onyx comes back in but he does get frozen the turn we bring him in therefore there's nothing we can do other than switch Amber back in for the finish. She then sends out another Frostlass but it goes for Hail over any other move so we can take it down very quickly with Amber's Shadow Claws. Finally, she sends out her Glalie. Now I opt to headbutt it with Amber hoping for some flinches but we don't get it and it hits a Blizzard which freezes yet another one of our Pokemon. Two in one battle with one ice move hit. It's a bit ridiculous game. Thankfully at this point though, it's low enough where we can just bring Emerald in and it's just one earthquake to take it out. Now we have the final Elite Four member being Drake the Dragon Trainer. There's one thing he doesn't expect though, and that's for us to have Opal the Walrein. So all we need to do is set up a hail and then we just use blizzards for days, boys. 5 pp a blizzard, 100% accuracy in hail, so they all go down swimmingly. Well, until we get to the Kingdra anyway. I knew a blizzard was very unlikely to take it out, therefore I decided to switch out, but he kept yawning us. Like, honestly, I think I switched about 7 times here, and he just kept yawning. Eventually, we get a turn on Amber where he didn't end up using yawn against us, so we can just use a few headbutts, but unfortunately, we do knock him into healing range. After this, it's not really safe to stay in, therefore I decide to bring Crystal out. Thanks to the water type and alongside the dragon, it doesn't actually end up resisting Leaf Blade, so it only takes us two, and we finally got past the Elite Four. Now, there's just one thing left. We prepare ourselves, and then we walk down a long corridor where there's going to be no turning back from. 
At the end, Smooth Skin Steven is waiting for us. Now, he opts to start off with Skarmory, therefore I choose Onyx to bring out first as we can Lava Plume him, and although he has Sturdy, we do manage to get past it after a few hits. He then sends out Agron, and I'm not 100% sure I'm going to take this thing out, so I switch Opal in. He gets hit for major damage with a Stone Edge, but I decide it's best just to stay in and surf him down to his Sturdy. We are low enough to be taken out, but there is also a decent chance he's going to miss his next move. So I opt to go for another surf, but unfortunately it's nowhere near enough and we lose Opal the wall rain. It's been so short lived and I'm honestly gutted that we've lost him, but at least it's the final fight and he did make some very good uses over the course of the Elite Four. Because we get a free switch in, I choose to bring Crystal in, and since he's only on one health, I can safely Mega Evolve and go for a power up punch to up our attack and 100% take him out. After this, he chooses to send in Cradle and I thought an X Scissor would take it out with the attack boost, but unfortunately, it doesn't quite get there. However, the good thing is it did knock him into healing range, so I can get a free power up punch, which ups our attack, meaning the next X Scissor will take him right on out of there. He then sends out his Armaldo, but I really don't think Crystal can do it. Therefore, I switch in Onyx and use a Lava Plume. Little did I know, though, this would be the last Lava Plume we ever get to use with Onyx, as we do get taken out a couple turns later. You truly did a lot for us over the course of this entire run, and I'm so thankful. It's a shame we couldn't get you to the end, mate. Anyway, with him down, we have to send in Emerald, and I use a Protect to try and get the burn damage to take him out. I then opt to go for a sword stance to up my attack and the burn damage should finish him off. But he holds on on a slither. He's not really doing too much to us though, so I choose to risk him hitting us again and use another sword stance. But plus four attack is really needed because we've got to take some truly impressive Pokemon out. He then sends in his clay doll, but we only need to use two slashes and we've taken him right on down. After this, he sends out his final Pokemon and Ace being Mega Metagross. We use one Earthquake and it doesn't finish him off, meaning we have lost yet another Pokemon. Steven has decimated our Shinies so far. I then make an incredibly big brain play and I bring in my Mega Crystal. But I use X Scissor like a moron, meaning we don't take it out and we lose our starter Pokemon. This leaves it as a one on one. Amber or Metagross, who will win? Well, Amber's quite quick and Metagross is insanely low, so obviously we win it. I know I made some terrible plays at the end of this, but thank God we managed to beat this run with shiny Pokemon only. Now, due to actually having to find the shinies, this video took me a long time, so I'd really appreciate if you guys could like the video and subscribe to it. As always, any runs you want to see, just leave in the comments down below, and I read every single one of them, so whatever you put, I will probably get back to you. Thank you all for your time and goodbye.